Tim Schwartz and Brian Benefitemi. I'm Blake Suniga. We're glad to have you along for the ride. Well, coaching in this league, not easy by a long shot. What's the biggest challenge for head coaches? Well, for me, there's only 12 teams in the entire league, so you see the same clubs quite a bit. Coming up with different wrinkles, the game plan, I mean, that's so tough to do. Everybody knows everybody in this league. Yeah, and for me, it's the roster size. You only have 12, sometimes 11 players at your disposal. So you have to be smart with rest. You have to be smart with minutes. And you don't really want to overextend your stars. Plays with lots of movement offensively. Great from the perimeter, but also capable of doing damage inside. Now here's Robinson. And there's the three-second violation. Three seconds. Phoenix Mercury ball. Guarded closely. Pass to Griner. It's good. The assist that time from Skyler Diggins Smith. Credit Diggins Smith for finding the open teammate. Skyler has insane hoops IQ. Knows where all the chess pieces are. Now here's Hole. Now Vivians. And here's Cole. Clock at four. Buries it from three-point range. A textbook feed to Hull, who was all set up, ready to shoot. Rossi outside. Pass to Petty. Back to Tarasi. Over Hole. Kept alive. Reiner misses. And in the first, little over a minute and a half in. Floats one. That shot off. Well, the end of the last decade was pretty rough for Indiana. They were one of the best teams in the league from 2009 to 2015, making it to at least the Eastern Conference Finals in uh, five of those seven seasons. Back to Diggins Smith. Chaka, two right there. I love seeing Petty share the well, looking to get her teammates going. Outside, Robinson. Going back a few years for the Fever, during that 2009 to 2015 run, they were one of the elite organizations in the league. Absolutely, reaching three WNBA Finals, including winning it all in 2012. I am sure that Fever fans are itching for those glory days again. I tell you, she loves getting looks like that from three-point range. Just nobody near her. Pass to Egbo. Right 
Outside Vivians. Shoots over Petty. Misses off the left iron. The defense can't make a habit of giving her that shot. She just doesn't miss many of them. Diana Taurasi on the wing. From 11 feet away, Robinson grabs the miss. The fever trailing. Pass to Vivians. Here's Egbo. It's Daniel Robinson on the wing. To the left side wing. They grab their own miss. Oh, it's good Lexi. for her second make. Two for three so far. Well, taking full advantage of her length, Lexi Ole gets the rebound and it makes the second chance play work. And here is Petty. Here's Griner. Can't hit from the low block. And here's Vivians. And the call will be against Vivians. That's her first foul. Way to get there first and absorb the contact. Yeah, clearly no flop there. That was a direct shot to the chest. Sims with it. Pass to Turner. Now here's Griner. Petty. And it goes as the official calls the foul. Count it. And she'll shoot one more at the line. There were so many great stories out of the 2020 Bradenton Wubble. Shea Petty might be the best. She didn't make her WNBA debut until she was 30, signed by Washington in 2020. One shot. In that 2020 bubble, Shea Petty might have had the best moment of that summer. While the Mystics wave Petty, she signs with the Mercury, and then a month later, those teams are facing off in the playoffs. And then, Petty hit a buzzer-beating three to win it, eliminating Washington. Now here's Hull. She has five. Just five to shoot. Pass to Henderson. Over Sims. Henderson, shot is off. She had all the space she needed, but just could not find the bottom of the bucket. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. What you like about Shea Penny, she's so consistent. It makes her a valuable part of this rotation. She made the only free throw attempt she had earlier in the game. Two shots. Take a break, take a break. Two shots. And the first one falls for her. So she makes one of two as the second one misses. You know, Emily Angsler does a little bit of everything for this team. She is a double-double threat, but she can also chip in with steals and blocks. Now here's Nurse. Nice shot by Petty. And there are four points onto an early lead that uh, just keeps on growing. And a nice lead it is. And it's no mystery how they've done it. They are attacking that bucket. And that was the mobile one drive, low resistance to the finish line. Well, it's all about breaking the paint, whether it's creating for a teammate or for yourself. All up top, she's covered by Sims. Pass to Henderson. Here's Engsler. Egbo, she's guarded by Griner. Here's Henderson. Here's Cannon. 
So she gets the whistle. Contact on the way up. Two shots next. And first trip to the free throw line for her in this one. Emma Cannon. Taking two shots. And no good on the second free throw. She goes 0 of 2. To the paint. Here's Nurse. Rebounded by the Fever. The D was ready for her that time. And they had to be. She is strong in the paint. Now here's Henderson. Shoots over to Shields. Domination in the first quarter. It's Steve. been pretty lopsided. Five. It's the Mercury up by 10. Stay with us as we get set to bring you quarter number two after this. And welcome back. It's been all one-way traffic through the first as the second quarter gets underway. And what do you guys think about the Mercury here in this one? Defense paying dividends for them through one. Coach has to be happy about their effort on that end. Just a lot of hustle. Well, we know the WNBA playoffs are just one bracket. There's no distinction between West and East. And I love that setup. Some years there's clearly a better conference. In a lot of recent years, the West has been way stronger than the East. Absolutely. You want the best two teams in the finals, regardless of conference. Victoria and with this Williams. WNBA playoff system, we get that every year. Phoenix leading. Outside to Shields. Tarasi. And she banks in the layup. That might increase the degree of difficulty just a little. But Tarasi still knocks it down. Things like that don't bother her. Here's Cannon. Looking for her first basket still in this one. It's Danielle Robinson on the wing. Vivians. She's covered by Tarasi. Down to five on the shot clock. And that one's Victoria good. Vivians. Vivians. The second she got around the pick and shook her man, it was straight to the bucket for the easy deuce. Very well done. And a great job to get that angle on a tremendous drive. No quit. And that's how you get back into this game. Stay aggressive, and you just got to battle. Now here's Tarasi. Five points in the game. Here's Cunningham, covered by Smith. Shot on the wing. A shot by Cunningham, no good. The fever trailing. Now Robinson, drilled from 11 Daniel feet out. Robinson. When Robinson gets a scoring chance, she does not second guess, she takes it. Outside, Diggins Smith, count it. How's that for a move? Her crossover is a thing of beauty. Two minutes now played in this second quarter. Left side, Vivians. Doesn't get it to drop for her. And the Mercury going the other way now. Pass to DeShields. Now Cunningham. Over Vivians. A shot by Cunningham. No good. And here's Cannon. Vivians. She's covered by Tarasi. Robinson with the ball. Here's Egbo. Wyatt so far offensively searching for first points of the game. 
Cannon, no good. That's a surprise. Out of character for her to miss those when the D's not right in her face. Pass to Diggin Smith. Here's Cunningham. Rossi outside. Goes up and lays it in nice and easy. There's so much creativity in Tarasi's game. And I've noticed that she's so good at finding different ways to work around contact. Now a timeout called by Indiana. Really, they're not pleased at all with the looks they've given up inside. And they want to talk to the team about tightening things up defensively. Well, that's what's got to happen. And I'm sure the coaches will let them know about it. I mean, they're playing some soft interior defense. And that's a recipe for disaster. Six here in this quarter. The left wing. Here's Henderson. And two free throws coming up as she misses that one. Throwing the whistle on a lot of contact there. Well, you gotta love Destiny Henderson's commitment. Absorbing the foul and still getting the shot off. And this is her first free throw of the game. I've got a question for the both of you in terms of team building. Would you rather build around one star and then have a, you know, more of a collective of solid role players? Or would you go with the big three type model where you're filling out the rest of your roster with more veteran minimum contracts? Well, I think anytime you're really going for it, you need multiple stars to win a title. And to me, it's just much easier to fill the roster when you have a couple all-stars to plug in around. And I'm on the other camp. You know, I like having that one franchise player. You construct your entire roster around them. That way, if something goes wrong, you have some roster flexibility. Now, here's Petty. Count that one. Good as good. That's just straight right there. Petty not letting the physical defense get to her. And here's Henderson. Pass to Angsler. Two minutes and minutes here's Henderson. He's covered by Sims. Five to shoot. Tries it from 19. Henderson shot is off. Phoenix with the ball. It's Kia Nurse on the wing. Cole defending. Outside Sims. Out to Nurse. a little long. Well, for what's a routine shot, she looked a little nervous on that release, wouldn't you say? The 11-footer. Again, the miss by the Fever. And the Mercury with possession. They lead by 11. Sims with the bucket. Good vision from Kia Nurse. So she's able to spot a wide-open shooter and then set them up accordingly. 
here's Henderson. She's covered by Sims. Here's Hole. Again, the miss by the Fever. Over to the left wing. Down low. Count it. With Griner's frame and fundamentals, she's become one of the league's most dominant interior scorers. And they've been looking at a sink offensively. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. Pass to Henderson. Takes the three. It's rebounded by Phoenix. He's having all sorts of problems with her shot. Yeah, the words ice and cold come to mind with the way she's shooting the ball. Back to Nurse. Pass to Griner. And that comes Dude, off the assist by Gia Nurse. They aren't taking their foot off the pedal. They just keep on adding to their score. Yeah, I mean, it's never a good idea to back off, and it doesn't look That's like that thought has even crossed their score. mind. Credit to head coach for yeah. pushing this team. 12. And through the first half, a pretty lopsided affair. Mercury out in front, leading by 17. Stay with us, folks. We'll be back just after halftime to get the third quarter going. What I noticed more than anything about her first half offense was she didn't waste her opportunity. She made just about every good look she had. And they were pretty much all good looks. I mean, her shot selection has been phenomenal throughout the game. Welcome back to the start of the second half. Big margin on our hands, but we'll see if that gap narrows down in the final two quarters. Hull, she's covered by Tarasi. Back to Robinson. Pass to Hole. So the whistle blows on the shot. Two free throws for the contact there. First personal foul, team It's on Diana Tarasi. Well, at 3 and D wing, players like Lexi Hull, so valuable here in the WNBA. And it's her first trip to the line. Take a break, take a break. Two shots. And she makes the first. She makes both free throws. Diggin Smith with it. Rossi outside. Petty. Back to Tarasi. Pass to Griner. And it's out of bounds to the Mercury as Phoenix retains possession. She had no choice but to lunge for that pass to make sure it didn't get through. Yeah, and that was important because probably would have been a quick two points if she doesn't knock it out of bounds. So I love that effort level. Offensive board. Using the post moves to get the two points. Because of Griner's effort and enthusiasm on the boards, she's able to create second chance buckets for her team. 
Back to Robinson. Got it from about 16 Danielle feet. Robinson. Just a pure competitor. Robinson doesn't mind some tough tee. She knows how to beat it. Pass to Petty. Megan Smith. Now here's Griner. Eight points for her. Really left alone that time. She's up to her usual trick, shooting it well, scoring a lot of points, getting them in front. Time called here. Time the Beaver decide to talk it over. Yeah, I think the coach could be trying to just get a break in action to clear their heads. They've gone ice cold, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to give them a quick breather. Yeah, they needed the timeout here. Anything to try to get them to forget all the missed shots we've been seeing. Maybe refocus a bit. Guarded closely, Vivians. Shoots over Petty. And that one's Victoria good, Vivians. Vivians. Two minutes gone in this third quarter now. Pass to Cunningham. Now Petty. From down in the low post, it goes. How about the fearless nature of Shay Petty? Mixing it up down low. Woo! Outstanding dribble drive. And that replay was brought to you by Mobile One. That's how you have to play. They're still going hard, and that kind of energy and effort is how they built this lead. Now, Vivians. Knocks it loose. Petty with the steal. Rebounded by the Fever. Outside, Robinson. Tries again. And she lays Danielle it up and in. Robinson. The height of Robinson is just 6'5", but she always finds a way. Able to scoop the, the board and, and put it in. Rossi outside. Pass to Diggins Smith. Back to Tarasi. Six to shoot. Here's Petty. Three off the mark. Vivian's with the ball. Back to Robinson. Pass to Vivian's. Cannon. And here's Egbo. Second half here, and we're just over three and a half minutes into it. Brittany Griner with a defensive effort. Three, Diana Taurasi knocks down the three ball. With the beautiful outside stroke, Taurasi strikes fear in the eyes of her opponents. And here's Indiana, trailing by 19. Pass to Cannon. Oh, she's covered by Taurasi. Now 
Sears hole. She's guarded closely, and so she draws the foul on the shot. Second team foul. Well, no question, Hull gives her all on the play, making the effort to get the contact and earn the whistle. On the night, she's two for two at the stripe. The Fever making a switch here. Both good at the line. Now Sims. First outside. Pass to Griner. To Shields. Now here's Griner. Now here's to Shields. Robinson covering. Shot clock at five. Here's Sims. From out on the wing, she knocks it down. Here's Henderson. I'm called here. The Bulls turn aside to talk it over. Well, they want to tinker with the game plan a little bit, and now's the time to do it. Yeah, there was clearly some things going on out there that the coaching staff just wasn't a fan of. Phoenix on D. 19 point lead, which is the largest margin in the game. Outside Robinson. Pass to Engsler. Six on the shot clock. Here's Henderson. The Fever rebound. Now Engsler. Robinson with the ball. From past the arc, Mercury with the rebound. Yeah, the great shooters, they know when they've got enough opening to go through the three. I didn't think it was a bad choice there. Yeah, not very good defensive coverage that time. The D got lucky. Now here's Henderson. Robinson, no good. Well, you love the tough D, especially inside. And that's exactly what she gives you, Tim. Constantly making her presence felt around the rim. Seven second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Oh yes, the turnaround. Look, the mid-range game, it's pretty old school. And Griner is about fundamentals, which means she can hit those shots. Pass to Smith. Soft no, touch off the glass. Good the password. The assist Destiny was right on target. And here is Sims. She got it up in time. 
but a good call for it. And as we end the third quarter, a double-digit deficit will make it tough to come back. It's the Mercury, up 19. And we'll be back with you. Here's Petty. Outside, Diggins Smith. Petty. Cunningham, covered by Smith. Now Cunningham. Foul call that time on the way up. And that'll give her two chances at the first personal foul. Teams first. An incredibly successful shooter in the college game. I can't wait to see everything Cunningham can do here in the pro game. So she gets them both. Henderson with it. Pass to hole. Henderson. Tries from 10. And she hits the jumper for two. Such a composed finisher. Whether it's inside or outside, Henderson makes the most of her chances. Outside, Diggins Smith. And she drops in the layup off the line. Good job to create the easy bucket. Now that is nice. Glad we got a chance to check out that sweet drive one more time. Now here's Henderson. Outside, Vivians. Pass to Egbo. Hole with the ball. Vivians, Petty defending. Five on the clock. Back to Smith for three. Reiner with the rebound. Yeah, they've been really controlling this one. Never want to get too complacent, though. And just about over one and a half minutes gone by here in the fourth. That one is good again. He is six for eight from the floor with that basket. With an incredible motor, Reiner plays with the attitude of someone just trying to make the team. Not the all-world superstar she is. Now here's Hole. Pass to Henderson. Right side, Vivians. It's a deflection. And they post the shot clock violation. Great defense. Mercury ball. Here's Diggins Smith. We're in the fourth quarter here, just under two and a half minutes gone. Can't connect from short range. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, it's been a long time without a bucket. Focus. Hole. She's covered by Tarasi. Inside. Here's Henderson. And Diggins Smith pulls it down. Indiana. She was fouled on the way up. Just three throws for her. 
first person that one on Henders first. After sitting Second out the 2019 team team season due to the birth of her child, Skylar Diggins Smith was Skylar traded Diggins before Smith. the 2020 season. Taking one of the blockbuster shots. deals in league history. And the first one at the line is good. And Diggin Smith was dealt for three future first round picks. Uh, going from Dallas to Phoenix, forming a, a big three with uh, Griner and Tarazi. Uh, three ones, it's a really hefty price, but Diggin Smith is one of the truly elite players in the league. And that one goes in, two from the line that time. Exploding onto the scene during her senior year of college, Skylar Diggins Smith has delivered at the pro level, piling up all star appearances since entering the WNBA in 2013. Oh, and so she earns a trip to the line. Uh, officials saw the first contact foul, and she'll shoot first. two. First team foul. Shooting for the fever. Danielle Robinson taking two shots. The first one falls. In this league, so many years, the experience Robinson brings to her team is invaluable. Sets a strong example for younger players to follow. Both shots good from the stripe. And we're about three minutes into the fourth quarter now. Outside, Diggin Smith. Pass to Davis. Here's Thomas. Gray guarded by Davis. They get it back. Gray, no good. So it's Indiana now. And here is Mitchell. Another shot. Phoenix. The foul called on the shot. Got it on the way up that time. So when I think of crafty scores, I think of Tiffany Mitchell. She's so good at keeping Tiffany defenders Mitchell. guessing. At the line for two. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. the first one. Well, Mitchell made the WNBA's all-rookie team after her first season, but I think she's going to do much bigger things in this league. And good on the second, so she makes both. A little over three and a half minutes in the books now for this fourth quarter. Outside, Diggin Smith. Pass to Petty. Now to Rossi. She's covered by Mitchell. Now Petty. Let's go with a three. It's hauled in by Cannon. And the foul called on Petty. That's her first foul. First Tough break for the D. Took the hit and Third drew the whistle. Foul. But she was late to get there. The ref couldn't give her a free pass on that one. Fever. Time called here. The Fever decide to talk it over. Well, the coach needs to get him back into a flow offensively. Things have slowed down. And they're starting kind of to, to force their shots. Yeah, things have snowballed on them here. You know, the misses just started piling up. I like this timeout to sort of calm down the team and get reset.
with the ball. Two minutes remaining in the game. Two minutes. Here's Cannon. And she uses the glass on Cannon. the layup. The defenders didn't really even get a sniff of her on that move to the iron. Rossi outside. Back to Diggin Smith. Shot clock at six. Now here's Petty, covered by Vivian. Great positioning on the putback. The combination of a long frame and a unique skill set make Griner such a tough cover for opponents. Shots good by Cannon. Cannon. She is one of the best when it comes to making the sweet lead pass. And these guys have had some good motion on offense. Nice assists. When everybody's involved offensively, it's in a way helping you defensively too. Now here's Tarasi. Now here's Griner. Here's Petty. Good. And the assist goes to Brittany Griner. Good find by Griner. She's so much taller than everybody at 6'9". It allows her really to see the rest of the court. Pass to hole. And here's Cannon. The shot misses. Excellent D there from Skylar Diggins Smith. Petty with it, covered by Vivians. Here's Cunningham. Outside for Diggins Smith. Kept alive by Phoenix. Out of bounds. And out of bounds, the fever will take to Indiana. Substitution on the court. Indiana with the ball. And here is Mitchell. Pass to Cannon. Here's Mitchell. Davis. Pointer. She's covered by Sims. From about 10 feet out. And there's the whistle. Foul hard on the shot. And First we'll go to the line. Teams it's going to be on gray. Fourth team foul. Shooting for Indiana. Kayla Pointer. Two shots. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First free throw is good. Doesn't get the second. And stolen by Davis. And so it's Phoenix easily grabbing this one. They won this game going away. They were better basketball team by far. You gotta commend this sort of dominance here at home and feeling great. Playing well nearly the whole game. And I, I could feel it. This building was pumped, guys. That'll do it for our broadcast, everyone.